history like politics is an activity for free men and women in a free society it gives us a sense of a world family by understanding the past we become free from its dead hand in history as in science understanding be careful unprejudiced scrutiny of evidence and formation of a balanced judgment in the light of that evidence this is very important in fact as michael stanford's introduction to his book a companion to study of history in blackwell of oxford publication in 1994 every man and woman is his or her own historian every one of us has a history of our own historio graphy is the writing of history one or more of the three aspects of history writing history writing including descriptive historical and analytical descriptive historiography is what historians normally do and describe as standard methods and procedures historical historiography traces the ways in which history is written in the 2000 year 500 2500 years since herodotus from that time onwards analytical or critical historiography discusses the concepts and philosophical problems arising from the writing of history so a slight difference is the here there is some overlap of historians and philosophers their thinking overlaps history is the experience of human life extended over time it is not the past alone it has everything to do with the present and for the formation of a better future that is very 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 important when we say that history is a unity it is like a family the deeds of the family and the records of these deeds are both history it is the nature of the recorded deeds that shape future deeds hence unity is a continuous interweaving of these two strands the deeds and the records whatever we do we record that one and the oral traditions in history also has to be taken into account for this purpose what is the use and misuse of history can we avoid history and we learn from history how did prehistorical and historical people act and what was the cause of their actions and their effects how do our actions acquire meaning analysis of actions include the understanding that actions may be due to total or partial ignorance or due to misguided passions this also can lead it is also helpful to distinguish actions from behavior action embody the intention behavior does not embody an intention so the five parts of action we have to analyze they are one intention two assessment of the present state of affairs three the means we adopt to solve the problems four the drive or the will that prompt us to act and finally five the context of action the social physical and cultural context of the action awareness of our, awareness of our ancestors actions recorded unrecorded orally transmitted and their reasons and the analysis of that is what we call a national memory india has got a national memory which is very 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 ancient and india having such a deep long archetypal memory embedded in its psyche which is very important for a historiographer or a historian or even a philosopher this long past history is important the cultural context of a nation include its languages the technology it used arts used religious and spiritual traditions they follow the philosophy of their life the attitudes and beliefs the skills habits customs 
exploratory system and the like included in the social inheritance of all individuals living in a society symbols and the meaning of them in social physical cultural tech context involve a detailed study of this the historical significance significance of these are traced along two axes one is a horizontal contemporary axis and the other is a vertical that is the preceding and succeeding axis both are important there may be different meanings and different consequences for each context and one has to analyze them critically find out the consequences and why they happened and explain them murphy's law that is the law of unintentional consequences also has to be applied wherever possible now we will think of the uses of history one is we learn from the mistakes committed by the past and avoid them for a better future that's the most important use as far as i can i think second is aiming to preserve the values of the past that also is very important three aiming to avoid the superstitions of the past it is important to preserve the values and at the same time to avoid the superstitions of the past both has to be looked into then the use of history as an inspiration for the progress of the society for the progress of the nation now where does the abuse of history happen one is people go on perpetuating the superstitions of history they don't get rid of the superstitions that is an abuse of history second is the tyranny of theory subordinating history to a mere theory some simply to prove that our theory is the correct one they subordinate the true history for example hegel he dismissed all non historic people and thus the intrinsic human value hegel did not acknowledge the common people the uh, non historic tribal people etc so the intrinsic human value is lost in it then the third is tyranny of politics that is history subordinates to political power those in the political power create a history which is suited to themselves but not to the general public an example is the wig history written by lord macaulay lord macaulay had a political tyranny of the history male the fourth one is the male prejudices prejudice that women are inferior and their history is insignificant by that they even suppress several books beautiful works written by the uh, knowledgeable scholarly women even from the past it has been going on to avoid these dangers one more this is danger of prejudice and dictatorial regimes which creates history to suit its needs the teachers make the history of their own to avoid all this stanford suggests that history should be reassessed critically analyzed and rewritten by every generation mind every generation has to reassess critically analyze and rewrite when one starts this process all the others will start clamoring about ha they are changing history they are not changing history they are just reassessing they are critically analyzing and if needed rewrite the history we are concerned with the past because history is an outlook of the world with three sections one is our personal outlook the other is the public outlook and the third is the social sciences and history as a help for social science and vice versa an old photograph if you see an old photograph it may release a flood of memories which may be personal or may be national memories no both can be you know that nostalgic things can happen it need not be a memory of a single individual the memory of an individual of parents of grandparents all the ancestors which then becomes the memory of the nation or an archetypal memory of an entire people or community or of the world itself is to be treated in this way genealogical research 
search on the genes the sense of continuity of generations of genes is scientific as well as historical historical unit is a sequence of events that is intelligible in itself when this happens personal archetypal memories become historicity one is a player and a spectator of that drama of continuous events i am both the spectator as well as the player in the drama it is in this way private attitudes become public attitudes in history then it becomes a more impersonal honest approach it becomes more rational unbiased objective scientific the bridges that connect past with present are called are the evidences they are of four different categories of evidences the first one is the natural evidence see the rock the rock is viewed by geologists archaeologists historical geographers in different ways the other natural evidences like climate the sea the ways of the fishes the migratory fishes and the migratory birds take a particular way these then rocks are natural evidence for geologists fossils are for paleontologists past landscapes and uh, how humans changed them in is the natural evidence for historical geographers like that similarly the migratory birds for the travels of the ancient people in you know, artificial the second is artificial evidence man made changes in the climate and the environment with the transformation on it a tilled field a cleared forest a bridge the river a quill pen maybe a flute even a house or a city an urban settlement a ship or a raft all these are man made artificial evidences whatever is man made has a history of development of the techniques and of the procurement of materials for production of that and also the effort and intellectual growth of the human being who lived in that particular period then the third is communicative evidence these are the songs the tribal music the musical notations mathematical symbols meters cave and rock art paintings architecture inscriptions weapons temples literary works written documents of law science medicine art everything all these are communicative evidences these are not mere communications of day to day life hello uh, i got up in the morning i did that i did that. that is not the thing they are actually uh, sometimes very abstract levels of intelligence looking at a rock art we can see that abstract intelligence of the human being who created that art for example when we find the mathematical formula for an octagon in a cave painting like that of toveri kai toveri toveri adakkal it tells us that the cavemen were having a very high abstract sense of mathematics so also musical instruments musical notations as we find in samaveda these are communicative evidences then processive evidences these are usually overlooked by many it is the evidence of the process of growth a community having low abiding habits relations living traditions lifestyles their knowledge systems incorporated into their life these things are to be observed and analyzed and understood in a very subtle way documents may be altered in course of time work of arts may be destroyed the processive evidence of a prolonged past in an ancient culture may survive even after the documents are destroyed and this survival for thousands of years before the lifestyle was formed and written down and even after they were destroyed and altered by power politics is what is called processive evidence india is rich in this spoken word and the oral historical traditions and what we know of the peloponnesian war comes from thucydides who either saw them or heard it from eyewitness as he records but mahabharata also is 
a war orally described by Sanjaya to King Dhrudarashtra. But we teach our students that the Peloponnesian war is history and the Mahabharata war is only a myth. Double standards. The, if their Mahabharata and Ramayana are oral traditions communicated over generations before it became uh, a written document. <clears throat> Veda, other sciences, arts and scriptures of India all share this type of character. If one go through Bhagavanda's Pranavavada, one will get an idea of this oral tradition and the memory and the scholarship it requires to be a bard like that. The subaltern history is the, the next one. That's the history of the marginalized people, of women. All are in oral traditions. Hence, to ignore such memoirs and negate them, the historical status simply because they were not written down, would be denying the evidence of history of oral and marginalized traditions. The aim of meta history, to use Hayden White's term, is to single out the terms and codes and conventions of historiography with the implicit message that these two have their history. Similarly, narrative history is considered part of the same cultural matrix. The social reconstruction of history depends upon all such considerations. Now, according to Stephen Bann, law, medicine and theology are siblings of history. They are siblings. A dictionary of 1654 AD lists four professions as being medicine, jurisprudence, theology and philosophy. Both together. As an Indian woman practicing Western medicine and the Indian Dharma. Dharma is the uh, better word than the word jurisprudence. No? Uh, and spiritual traditions of India. And the comparative philosophy of the West and East. I find this very interesting. When I write Indian history, all these facts have been of help to me. Thanks to the siblings of history, I am equipped with a scientific order of events, historical analysis, political thoughts and social sciences, not to mention anything about the research methods of medical science. Lenin was fond of repeating the term to cure the society of its ills. History is able to cure the society's ills without having studied medicine, to borrow from his vocabulary. Even without studying medicine, history can cure the illnesses of society. But if one has learned medicine and then study history to cure the ills of society, it should be doubly effective. I presume like that. Comparisons between historiography and medicine have their own historical locations in the ancient world. Polybius compared historians' practice to that of a doctor, both being specialists collecting signs interpreting them, arranging them in a chronological order. Thucydides had kinship with Hippocrates. He was a historian of Pathos, as opposed to Herodotus, a historian of Ethos, Pathos and Ethos. The connection between Thucydides and present-day historian is that between an ancient medical writer and a modern medical researcher, a continuity exists between them. Hence, my endeavor as a pathologist and a woman who touches both the pathos and the ethos of the society to study history is a continuation of what ancient scholars have been doing. Moreover, history of women is not given much importance. They are just mothers, sisters, wives, companions, concubines, secretaries, teachers, doctors, professionals traditionally playing supportive roles and secondary roles only in society. This is not for Indian women alone, but all the women are categorized like that. Indian women were better off in this regard when we compare the ancient history of Greece, Rome or Europe. Patbar's book, The Memsabs, The Women of Victorian India, published in 1976, gives a beautiful account of British Memsabs of India in Victorian era. The socio-political 
and spiritual history of India gives more importance to women in the pre-medieval and medieval periods.